God in his own wisdom, when he made Adam, he took the rib to make a woman and said, a woman is a helper unto a man. We thank God. We thank God. And then it is a woman who brings forth a man. So a woman is made through a man and then a woman gives birth to a man. So the matter is what? Two plus two is four. We thank God for our lives. And I'm thanking the pastors too and the whole church for giving us your puppet to stand here to say a word of God and the women to minister today unto the church. There was a pastor who once said, for a pastor to give you their puppet, it's like giving you your, their, their wife. Because not every man of God will give their puppet to anybody to come and stand here. No, 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 no. Because they don't know what is coming, what is coming from you. But by, by God's grace, they have allowed us. So we thank you, pastors. We thank the whole church too. Beloved, what I was going to say, the time is already gone, but I'll try my best. What I can, I can. Our mom, our sister, our grandma has said a lot about women. And before I start, women, we were of no value. Women were looked down upon. Women were like, we were like an outcast. Nobody cared about us. Even in Leviticus, when you read there, there was a verse chapter that if it does this, when a woman sits on the chair, nobody will sit down there. Because we are like, we, we never ex existed. And when I was growing up, I remember our grandparents, they are not there. They always say, for me to take a woman to school, waste of money. You know why? Because when he is of, of age, he only married and gives birth. That's what they produce children and get married. That's, you know, there's nothing in them. So why should I send a, a, a woman to school? But thank God, Jesus came and everything has changed. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We give all the praise. What can we say? So women, we should hold on to Christ very tight, firm. Don't let him go from your hand. Because he had made us whom we are. Had it not been Jesus, we would be where we were. No education. Nowadays, when you go to the villages, you see a man holding the cutlass, going behind a woman. And then the woman will be carrying things in the basket. The babies at the back. And the man will be just, you know, be walking majestically. And then, you see? So God has helped us bringing Jesus Christ, has redeemed us. So... When we read the Bible, the women in the Bible, the way they cherish, the way they help with the church, the way they were doing their things, beloved, we need to learn from them. We need to learn from the ladies. And one thing I've noticed is that the devil is a liar. You know the weapon that the devil uses? Fear. 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 That's his weapon. And fear, even the Bible says, those who are fearful, they won't go to heaven. So the devil has seen that, you know, he's holding on to this weapon as fear. So he's put fear in us that we can't do the work of God. But the Bible says, God did not give us spirit of fear. But he gave us for power of love and sound mind. So we shouldn't fear. When the Holy Spirit comes unto you, there's nothing you can't do. You rely on the Holy Spirit. He says he will teach you and remind you of everything. So don't let fear, the devil put fear in you. And we know one thing about Christianity is that God will never force anyone. You have to avail yourself. And you, if you say, I will do it, of course, God will, see, God will show you that you are, you know, you're not an empty vessel. You can do something. There was a writer who said, everything that God created, it will solve problems. And it's true. We are all here to solve problems in one way or the other. Not only the pastors. We are here to solve problems. And God has sent us here for a purpose. 
we are strangers and aliens. And God said, go there and do my work. So each of us, we have a work to do. When you read Ephesians, today I won't read much. Ephesians, the, the doctrine will come. Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 10. The Bible tells us that we are God's workmanship. God, we are there to do God's work. We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do the good work that God prepared in advance for us to do. So before we came to this earth, the work is there for us to do already. We've been sent as one eight. When Jesus died, he told the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes unto you. Then you receive power and you go to all the nations, Jerusalem and Judea Samaria and the ends of the world to proclaim my word. So we have been sent on this earth. We are not here for, 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 for by, by chance. We are here for a purpose. God has a plan for us. God's intention for us. He knows why he brought us here. That's why if you can remember Jesus Christ anytime he says I want to finish my father's work. I've been sent. I want to finish my father's work. We have a work here to do and finish it. So we can't come to church and just be in church goers. We come and we go. When we, we ask us, what did we preach? We can't even remember. When you're in the church, beloved, find something to do. Because this is your, your God's house, your father's house. We've been sent. So find something to do in the church. So that if you're not there, people will know, oh, this sister didn't come. Sister Mercy didn't come because they're off, uh, the offering. She always with uh, our, our uh, son, uh, Sean. They always count it. So today, she didn't come. People will notice. Then if you have to get somebody to replace you, emergency. And also, if you're not coming, let us know. As our sister said, lateness. Today, we could have done it and finished nicely. But because we're late. You don't go to God's house anytime you want. When you're going to work, you are panicking. Because when you are late, two times, they will fire you. Even work that God gave you strength to go. What about the guy, the, guy, the man who gave you strength, who gave you the bread, so that you can go up by your business? You are coming to his house once in a week, then you are late. Beloved, we should ask God to help us. And also, I'm coming from here. When we say women, we all know women, it can be women who have children women who are single, women who haven't got biological children, a, 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 mother's, a, mother, a, figure, a, a mother figure to somebody, our big sisters, our aunties, they are all mothers. And you know the hard work they do, we all know, especially, especially in the Western world, whereby there's no one to help you. When they are married, beloved, those who are single, let me tell you something, if you are not married, don't worry. Don't rush. There's no rush in it. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, when you read the one. Sister, can you read there for me, please? Sister Christina. First Corinthians chapter one verse. No, chapter seven. Oh. First Corinthians chapter seven. <laughs> chapter seven verse. Verse one. Verse one, please. Just read a little bit about three, three chap, uh, verses. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Amen. Thank you. Because of sexual immorality, hmm? let every man have their own wife, every woman, their own husband. As we read the other day, 1 Corinthians 6 12, also. Sister, 1 Corinthians 6 12. The Bible is telling us the, the body is a temple of God. 
because God's spirit in, is in us. So when you fornicate, a place that God, God lives in your heart, your temple, he says every sin is outside the body. But sexual immorality, fornication, is the body. When you unite with a prostitute, you become one with the prostitute. Because he says the two, the man will leave a mother and a father, and join a woman, they'll be one. So you are one. Spiritually, you and your, husband, your wife, you are one. So if you haven't got married, that place is for God. Don't mess it. Wait for the Lord. God's own time, he's going to make it. Sometimes we rush, and we go and mess away. God has prepared a man that his risk has been taken to make you. Maybe he's waiting somewhere for you. But because you are rushing, you go and take a wrong one. You don't wait. We need to wait on the Lord and pray to the Lord. The Bible says, when we read Isaiah 40, he says, I think the last uh, verse, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will walk on the wings like eagle. They will run, but they won't get tired. They will walk, but they won't faint. Wait for the Lord, beloved. Wait for the Lord, and God's time is the best. I use mine as an example. Look at me, I'm not, so, I'm not that ugly. Am I so ugly? No. no. But marriage was a problem to me. Not that I won't get a man. There are some men that would love me, yeah. And I'm a nice look at it. When I look in the mirror, I know I'm one of those people, yes. Yeah, but don't. Marriage wasn't coming. I even went to America to get married. The guy I met him there, my God. I said, Lord, why did I even come here? The man was a womanizer, no respect, beating me. I said, what? Lord, do I deserve this? So it came a time. <laughs> I used to go to a church. And then the man of God said, hey, where are you coming from, sister? <laughs> For you to get a man to marry, it will be a problem. So you have to do fasting. I wasn't going there, but God, maybe God wants me to share this. I will share it. So you have to go on fasting. 21 days in this country, I was only taking fluid. I never went to the toilet for the 21 days. I was going to work then. I stopped work because my, my breath, I hear a voice. He said, you will die. I said, I will die. I will do it and die because I've disgraced me. If I die, so what? So I will do it and let me die. And I was, I even, you know, because at work, they, they support me. We were always eating the uh, residence food. We were eating as well, but I wasn't eating. And I was growing lean. So people were watching me. Millicent, why don't you live a simple life? What's wrong with you? So I said, Lord, I will take holidays. So I took holidays and I was home. So only my Bible. And the man gave me some verses. Only my Bible and prayers. I drink tea, orange juice, and water for the 21 days. I said, I never went to the toilet. You know, there are some cases, it's not just prayers can do it. You have to back with prayers. Aggressive prayers and fasting. Then when I finish, the dream I had, I can't go on because we haven't got time. Then when I finished, the man of God said, do another 40 days. Hey! <laughs> but these 40 days, I will take only flu, uh, porridge, six o'clock. I'll take porridge at six o'clock. So I started this 40 days. Then uh, on the 30th days, I had an accident. That I was driving. I was driving to work. I had an accident. I knocked somebody's car. I said, the devil, you are a liar. Even when Jesus was fasting, you tempted him. I wouldn't, I would never give up. I will still go on. Beloved, and what I saw, and the man of God always prayed for me. Always, he will always go to evening service. And he prays for me. So you, and <laughs> even during the pray, uh, prayers, uh, that I used to go to Italy and buy some men's shoes to sell. I used to go to America and buy things and sell. So I was like, you know, as prophet was saying, May he so rest in peace. Women who do business, they don't even know their money. I didn't know where the money even go. I just go buy go to see. The money I come, it's gone. I don't know. I go and take a loan at the bank. Before I come, it's gone. So I went to, a, I was supposed to go to American first, Italy first. I didn't get the ticket. So I said, let's go to American first. So I went to American first. Then I came back. I was going to Italy. So I met this man of God. I knew him. Because at the church I used to go, he used to be there. He said, hey. Says, what are you? I'm so I'm coming here. He said, Do you come here? So I used to come here, but then of late I stopped coming back. I used to come here. 
so can you show the hotel that you lodge in the taxi? And I said, so I know everything, so don't worry. So we took a taxi, we went to the hotel. So in the evening, the man of God would meet me and the wife. He said, the wife wanted to go to Italy, but Italy, Italians, they are, you know, they are because they are <laughs> mafias, they are, you know, you are thieves, if you are not careful. Even when you go and buy things, the taxi driver will sell all your things. Your eyes should be open. Why we have to go, our money is now, which I will cover it with the, our coats. So the man of God used to pray together with the wife. Then he noticed that I was holding the British passport. Then he was talking to me. Oh, sister, are you married? I said, no. Oh, I've got a man of somebody in Ghana. She wants a wife. He's a man of God. So I would like him to, you know, you two, the two of you, you know, communicate. So they came first before I came. Oh, what I'm going to, please have time for me a little bit. So it's a testimony to encourage somebody. So you know what? They came first and I came later. But the man was bombarding me with the phone calls. Every time he's phoning me, every time he's phoning, sister, I, I want the man to talk to you. Then I said to myself, a man from Ghana, a, a, a man of God from Ghana coming here, he's come to use me. Nowadays, men, the man of God, you know, we can't even tell who, who, who's who. But then, eventually, I gave my number to the man of God. That time, I think I was still doing the fasting. And then he got to know that I'm doing fast. Hey, a woman. In, Western world, do you fasting? This woman might be a woman who fears God. And that time, the prophet, they want him to get married because they, he, he got married to two women, they weren't good. So she said she won't marry again. So they f were forcing him to get to married. So I came to the scene. So the man used to talk, so why are you still not married? I explained everything to him. Then we were, two years, we were communicating. Imagine, oh, Two years, we were on the phone communicating, praying. And they, they have, the Ghanaians have given him so many women. And one, one thing prophet has got, the gift has got, when he tell you don't go to this marriage, and you go, hey, what will we tell you? But when you say, I've seen this, I love the person, you say, okay, you have chosen it already. I will back with your prayers. But when he say, don't go, and you listen to him, you'll be successful. So the women, they brought their pictures. Everybody brought pictures, he was praying over them. Then he said, my one, and that time too, I was even sending my tie to him as well. I used to send my tie to men of God all around. So he said, ah, this woman. So he said she was praying over all the pictures. Then I got God's favor. And even how I ran to Ghana to get married, it is God, when the time came. Maybe God is preparing a special mind for you. Maybe God is going to prepare a great man, true prophet, this church has been open. When he came here, through him, the church has opened. And now I'm able to stand to preach to people. God, everything God did is for solving problem. God will locate you. It doesn't matter. It's not getting too late. Wait on the Lord. Don't let men use this body. You know what men do? Whenever they sleep with a woman, when they see their friends, they point fingers. We will be nada. We will be nada. Oh, my God. Jesus, disgracing me. So because of that, I, don't, from, I, kept, I, saw, I told my, my, I had a friend who's a Muslim, and I told her, I said, Hajia, me, no man will come near me. I won't give this body to no man. It's for God. I'm waiting on the Lord. If I marry, it, better. If I don't marry, I don't care. And look at the scene. Who came? A very great man came into my life. And because of him, we are worshiping here now. Amen. Maybe God has got something good for you. We will rush and miss your way. Wait for God. God work in miracles. We don't listen. We don't obey. We don't listen to God. That's our problem. Human beings, we are always in a hurry. But wait on the Lord. And at the right time, God will open doors. And if you are married too, marriage is an uh, institution from God. God lost. You know why God lost marriage? Because there's love. And where is love? God, God loves love. God is love. If anyone loves, he's been born of God because God is love. Our Christian journey is all about love. If you love somebody, you won't hate them. You won't do anything to your brother or sister to harm them, isn't it? Hello? It's me. Yeah. Is it me? Yeah. 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 Edwin, okay. So the devil knows that where there's love, two people agree together. She doesn't want that to be, to be working. So if you come into the middle, Petty, petty things. 
he bring argument. And the Bible tells us Ephesians 4, 26. When we are angry, we shouldn't sin. And we shouldn't let the sun go down on our, our anger. Even the teeth and the tongue, they stay together, but they fight. Imagine somebody from the other family, different family coming to meet. It's not easy. When I met prophet first, it wasn't easy. And you know how the man is straight. It wasn't easy for me. Every cup of tea, I have to make his cup of tea. And she, the way she, I said, hey, this man. And he was sleeping at the hall. Hey! I, I said, why don't I go and bring this man? And he always said, why you, 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 you put me in the room? I'm, on, I'm lonely here. I've come here. So when he went to Ghana, I said, God, thank you. He went to hold us. God, thank you. I wasn't even talking to him. He said, I don't pay me. I don't pay me. I don't pay me. That was all they be stay there. <laughs> you have to work at your marriage. It is, you need to work at it. The beginning, it won't be easy. But when you are growing, oh, marriage is sweet. That's I miss a prophet all the time. When you are getting old, oh, marriage is sweet, eh? Lord Almighty, there's nothing like that. When you are getting old, oh, now that you are young, we are going to work. So you don't, you don't feel it. You don't see it well. But when you are getting old, Jesus Christ. So when the prophet was alive, I said, those who haven't got husbands and wives, I pity them. It's so sweet, so enjoyable. But take your time. But if you have got it, take care of it. Don't mess, you know. I, when I used to go to Mano House, and my life in this country was like, before when I went to this uh, fasting, it's like when I, I, I used to do shift work. When I come from work, eh, I just, I shift, when I'm in morning, I come in the evening, I had a bath, have some rest. Then I go to Mano House because also there's always a crusade there. And my, I hear a voice, go, go, go. So I go there. It, I didn't have time for my, myself. When I'm in early, when I finish work, I will go to my uh, uh, Latin. That's where my church was. I go to Latin. I was driving that time. I go to Latin. And then the evening Saturdays, I have a Bible group that I joined. My, my life was work, house, then God's place. I, I didn't have time to gossip on the phone about somebody. Because the time. There was something that, there was an incident in our church. I didn't even know. Because when I finished work, when you're on my way, I, dra I, 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 dro I drop you. I came, come home, go to work. From work, I go to crusade. Or go to my evening uh, prayer, prayer meeting. So my advice to you, order. When you are married, beginning is not easy, but work at your marriage. Some men, they are, you know, before they got married, the way they were living their life, hygienically, they don't care. He doesn't mind him putting the clothes on. The next morning, he puts on, come to church. How can you come to God's house with the filthy clothes? So if this is happening, no, you are the woman and you are the helper. You see to the man's hygiene. Sometimes don't go and say, oh, hold on. No, 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 we can't say that. If he hasn't used deodorant, you go and buy it. Eh? When she's going out, you make sure the dressing is good. When prophet was, he wanted to come out, I go, we go together to buy his clothes. I go with him. You chose for him. It's better because when anything, you are disgraced. You see? So everything about the man, and also the way we treat our men. Beloved, respect him. When I used to go to this crusade, the man of God said to me, some worry I am when you're married. The man is God's son. So when you hurt him, you are hurting God. I didn't understand it. But God has made us as his own image, the likeness of God. So if you treat your husband anyhow, you are, you are treating God the same thing. Because we are, we are the same as God. God. We are God's image. So respect your husband. Respect your husband. Everything about him. Don't go. This country, this is what the women do. I know my right. When the man brings them here, then they come and call him. Eh? Or be generous. So. No, 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 no. You have to submit. The Bible says we should submit to the husband. They are the head. And they will treat you. They will respect you. But you, you have to submit to them. No matter your education. No matter your beauty, no matter the work you do, your wages, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God brought him or you to his life for a purpose. Maybe you're going to have a child that the child don't know what the child is coming to do in this world. So respect your husbands. Treat them nicely. Don't talk to them anyhow. At home, come on, some, some women, they give their husbands cheeky, cheeky words. Cheeky. And why God say you have, when you read the, the, the women in the Bible? <laughs> eh? Dorcas. Dorcas was doing good, sewing clothes for the widows. Eh? 
She died. But because of her goodness, they're waking up. Her up. Look at her, uh, 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 Mama Hannah. Prayerful woman. It was a barren. And the other, uh, the brother was laughing. Even when he was praying, Elias said well, she was drunk in the morning. You know, but then she prayed and God gave him Samuel. And look at Samuel, a prophet. Look at her, the spice, uh, Rahab, hiding the spices. Eh? Look at her mom, Sarah, so submissive, calling our, our dad, uh, Abraham, master. How many times do you call your husband masters? Eh? I remember one day I went to, there was a lady called Kualaji. She used to live in Tottenham. I think their, 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 their home is in uh, uh, Bantuma, G, around there, Bikai, that, that, that side. She was a popular woman here. And I happened to be there one evening. The husband was coming from work. The way this woman went and received the husband, hey, kissing, kissing, oh my dear, hey, oh, Lord. I said, well, when would I get my husband? The way she did, the way you treat your husband, maybe the husband is coming from home. Maybe she's upset, something has happened to him. At the door, you meet him with your quarrel. A quarrelful woman, eh? Then when the poor man finished work, he doesn't even want to come home because it's not enjoyable in the house. She comes, the woman's face is from long hair, long hair, long face, long face. The woman's face is long face, long face, front the face. Eh? The poor woman, poor man. When she finished work, you can't even come home. I know this country, we've worked with them, the white people. If you are always throwing your face, you are not here, everybody will come to you. They don't know what is in your mind, they are scared of you. So be cheerful, so that people can approach you. My mom used to tell me when I was young, you know how Ghana, they insult children. When I was in my uh, adolescence, eh? Mommy would to insult me. When I go, hey, oh, I won't eat your food. I won't talk to you. My face will frown. Mommy said, hey, Nanakosia, when I be wadu. Who are going to get married to you with this face? No man. Men want to be cheerful. Be cheerful. The poor man, don't treat him anyhow. He's God's image. You have to sub submit to him. Respect him. Also in the church, you might be familiar with a man who is maybe in a higher position. The Bible tells us. What is what we get? Please, can you read the uh, uh, Hebrew 13? Hebrews 13. Um, Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. Go on, read, read first here, please. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Okay, this is a hospitable, like a Sumerian woman. <coughs> Excuse me, okay, go on, sister. <coughs> Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Marriage is honorable among all. Okay, stop it. Read seven, please. Seven, seven the seven. Remember those who rule over you, <coughs> who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. You see, because they are in a high position, they speak the word of God to you. It doesn't matter you are familiar with them. You are so free with them, so you talk to them anyhow. They are here to represent God, isn't it? So they are God figure. You have to give them respect if they are husband too. You have, because of the work they do, you have to respect them. Don't treat them anyhow because they are because you are familiar with them. You talk to them anyhow. You talk about, you know, about them, what they haven't done, you go gossiping about them. Don't do that. The Bible is not telling us to do that. If you're a child of God, a woman of God, you should respect. Respect is something that is it's not only at home. And also, when you read, read the 17 also for me, please. 17. Obey those who rule over you. And be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Thank you very much. Because of the work they do, poor pastor, 
because men don't talk too much. Men, they have all things inside. Then ladies, you barbat them because you are in the, in the, I know my right. The Bible says, hold on to what is right. Eh? And avoid what is wrong, evil. We came to this country, say when you go to Rome, do what the Romans do. Because this country, they chop their husbands out. You are, you are following them. Because now I know my right, now you are in London. So you are roughing. Be careful. If you're a woman of God, respect your husband. I know there was an instance, there was a, a lady who was married to this man. And the way she was treating the woman, the man at home, it wasn't good at all. But the pastor, but don't the pastor, hey, pastor, hey, hey. Even when the pastor comes to their house, the plate that the pastor will eat for me, the husband doesn't get that plate. So the, the husband was always fighting with the woman that this pastor thinks he's your boyfriend. The way you treat him, don't treat him like that. So there was a conflict. So one day, the a man of God went to their house just to settle matters. Then the man said, Pastor, it's because of you, my marriage is collapsing. He said, oh, why? He said, yes. My husband, um, my wife doesn't treat me well. But the way she treats you is different for me. Charity begins at home, my dear. Charity, be that poor man, that's, you know, without him, you are nothing. No matter what, in the shanty, we say there, about a When a woman buys a gun, it's in the man's room. We, we can't, the man can be, the boy, you can be a small boy. Give him respect. And the way we talk to our children, Kwasia, Unyeda. What? The tongue. Whatever comes to your mouth, the Bible says it should be blessing. It shouldn't be a curse. And beating your children. This country don't do that. My sister Nature, I may her so rest in peace. She came here. And then he saw how people treat children in this country. He said, Yeah, sister. I'll take off my children because I'm beating them all around. Sometimes you might even forget. I, 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 in the outside, you, you beat them. And the, these people, they'll they call police on you. Because you, are, you, know, you will become accustomed to it. So anything we do, we are doing as to God, not for us. Because anything that we do, our name is written. Any little, because you have brought us here to solve problems. So anything that your hands are trying to do, do it. Don't be idle. Before, they yeah, were going to talk about Esther in the Bible. I will talk a little bit. There's Esther in the Bible. I will cut it short. I'll, I'll cut the scene where she got married. She had God's favor was in her. So she got married to the king. And this king was a Zalos. Z E R X E R X E Zalos. And he was ruling uh, Persia and Media, 27 provinces. That's from India to Kosh. That's where he was ruling. He's a mighty man. And then the woman, the wife, disobeyed him. So he went. The elders around him said, "This you called the woman to come. He had it. He gave a banquet that was showing off his wealth and everything. People came all over. And then the woman too held a banquet for the uh, officials, the ladies in the, uh, the Paris. So after that, the last day, then he had another, I think one week, for another banquet. They were eating, drinking, all jewels. It was a mighty, no, it wasn't easy. So the, 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 you called, you went, he sent the servant to go and bring uh, Vasti. The woman was Vasti, the wife, to come. And the woman said, I'm not coming. Hey, your wife, has, your husband has done this. He's inviting you to show. We, no men like to show off their, their wife. Especially when you are beautiful, my God. They want to show your beauty and your, the clothes that you wear to people. This is my wife. Hey, this is my wife. You know, they're bluff about it. So the poor king wanted to show. This verse is, I'm not coming. So the elders there, I just want to shorten, summarize it. So they advised the king. He said, it's grace. Even our wives are not going to respect us because of him. Hey, so you know what we do? We are, doing a, we are writing a decree. Vasti will never come to you anymore. And we are going to look for young, beautiful virgins. And they have to go to uh, beauty treatment for some time. After they finish, they will appear to you. Then you select. And there was this poor Esther, a Jewish. The, the parents have died, no mother, no father. The uncle Modikia brought her up. Eh? And then Esther, they were not on exile. They, they, go, they went with a king, Jehoiakim. They were all messed up. But the, uh, the exiles were supposed to go back to Jerusalem. But some didn't go, most of them didn't go. 
about 50,000 went. So uh, Mordecai and Esther, Mordecai brought Esther up because that's a, a brother's a daughter. So this lady, you, who are we? You are an exile. Then you are orphan. You are very poor. But the beauty contest, he said, I'm going. I don't care. She knew the God that she was watch, serving. He had he has faith that she belongs to God. He said, I will go to the, for this contest. So she was there. And anyone who saw her loved her. She had favor everywhere. And then when they finish the beauty contest, they have to approach the king. And the king will make you know, select whom they want she want he wants. Then Esther was the one that the king chose. Wow. And because the faith he had, Esther was chosen. He put on the royal crown. So now Esther became a queen. Thank God. Then Mordecai, the uncle who brought him up, has told Esther not disgrace, uh, to disclose her nationality. And then Esther was there. Then there was a plot that those who are the king's place wanted to assassinate the king. So Mordecai was there. He got to know and inform Esther. This is what they've brought. They want to get rid of, of the king. So Esther told the king, it was written in the king's diary, the book that is in the office. It was the king even signed and saw what happened. So now this Haman, who was in uh, one of the nobles, one of the nobles, Haman wanted, the, the king you know, promoted him than any of them. So the king said that when Haman is coming to the king's palace, those are the gate, they should add them to him. But this is a Jew man, and the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, God said they should not bow down to any person, any, a person or an image. So they were all bowing down. Mordecai said, no, I won't bow down to this man. So those, at, the friends heard it, he went and told uh, Haman, Mordecai is not bowing down to you. So imagine that the king has promoted me, that people should bow down to you, are not bow down to me. She was furious. Then she, she got to know that Mordecai was also a Jew. But they didn't know Esther was a Jew. Esther, didn't, so Esther was so obedient. She listened to the, we have to listen to our husbands and children, listen to your moms. Obey. Colossians 3, 20. It says, obey your parents in everything you do. Obeying. Look at, what's the name? Saul, because of disobedience, he was disowned. Disobedience is spoiled things. So Mordecai, that one is in his head. The man thought maybe it's because of him, but because of the God that he served. God has told them not to bow down to anybody. So he's not, not bow down to any man. So the man was a furious. He went and told the king. Then they made a rule. That whoever doesn't bow down to Mordecai, we will get rid of that person. And you got to know that Mordecai was a Jew. So that they are going to kill all the Jews. And Esther is a Jew. They didn't even know. So the plot was made. But Esther, so Mordecai, the circular went wrong. The dispatchers took it around. They delivered it to all the provinces, 127 provinces. Okay. So to cut matters short, Mordecai got to hear heard about it. So he went out tore his clothes, start fasting and praying at the citadel in the, in the city of Susa. So the queen's maids got to know. The king said, queen, your uncle, she tore his clothes and he's all over the place weeping and mourning, yelling. So go and ask him what's happening. They went and asked. He said, tell Esther, there's a circular going around. They're going to get rid of, of all the Jews. If he doesn't approach the king, we are doomed. She shouldn't think maybe she's a queen in the house. It will affect him and his father's people. So, and to go to the king, you have to, the king has to invite you. Or he has to extend the golden scepter to invite you. You can't go there. You get, they get rid of you. So Esther said, how can I go to the king? I haven't been there for 30 days. So how can I go? So Esther tried, said, I will go. So he told them, all the Jews, to fast and pray. Some cases, you know, some ag ag aggressive things, you need fasting to attach to it. The man who gave me the fasting said, you, where you are, if you don't fast, there will be a time you can't fast anymore. Where you are, 
it will be hard to, to get a husband. I thank God that even I had a husband before, I, I, you know, even though he's dead, but at least I married. I thank God that they didn't want me to get married, but I got married in Jesus' name. So we are going to get married in Jesus' name, no matter what. But wait for you to your time is up. So, as I'm saying, so Mordecai, uh, Haman wanted to get rid of all the Jews, and the king has signed it. So there was a decree going on. And, you know, so Esther, she said, okay. The uncle said, go and plead on my behalf to the king, even though he hasn't called you, but there's nothing you can do. Now, this is, our life is in risk. It costs us our own life. So what I'm saying, I'll cut it short, I won't be long. So what I'm saying, I just want to cut it short. So what I'm saying is that the, the Esther said, he asked them all the Jews to fast and pray for three days. So after three days, he said, I'm going to appear to the king. Esther went dressed up, put her royal robes on, went to the Paris and stood before the hall. The king was there. The king just, oh, Queen Esther, what, the, what can I do for you? What's the matter? Come, come, come. She just heard the golden scepter inviting her to come. So Esther went. He said, what, what can I do for you? Even if it's half of the kingdom, I'll give to you. What can I do? It's a fast, fasting work. Fasting. Fasting is spiritually good and also health, health wise. Even health wise is good. When you fast, your health is good. So if you can fast at least twice or once a day, try and do it. It's good. So Esther, now, he said, you know what? He said, women, so you should know the time that you talk to your man. Your man the right time. You choose right ways. Eh? When she's not angry. That's where you approach him. When the man is coming, the face is from. And you are meeting him with uh, troubles. What do you expect? That's why some men, they don't, they don't slap you. Because men, the whole things in their, the whole in a law. They are not like women, cha, 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 cha. The whole things in. So what, once they are full of, they will even slap you. And they're not supposed to slap because of your ways. So Esther will wait for the right time. He said, you know what, king? The word that you use, you can't put it back. The word that you use, eh, it was charming. Just, you know, and he knows the, the, the man how to get it. So he said, oh, okay, I wanted to, well, I'm holding a banquet tomorrow. Will you come? You and Haman, the man who wants to get them. He said, okay, no problem, we'll come. But anything you want, he said, no way. So he went to the banquet, the, 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 that day, the banquet came on. Then he didn't repeat, he didn't tell what he wants. You know, he prays that God has put something, God has, you know, given the Holy Spirit has told her what to do. Because she's spiritually filled. So, he says, I, I want you to come next tomorrow to another banquet. Then this woman prepared his favorite dish. Do you ever prepare the favorite dish for your, your husband? When the season comes, the food that he likes, eh, when you go home, you get that from prepare it nicely. And you dress nicely too. When she comes and meets you, told the king what he wants. That just says, circular going around. They want to get rid of me and my people. So even the king didn't know Esther was a Jewish. So what I mean? And the man that has, you know, put the uh, garons, the Haman was so, Mordecai was so, eh? That Haman, she was there. You know why the guy lady chose that time? She was, you know, descend. You could descend. He had the knowledge of God to descend. So, because it's at the spot. He's there. Then the king said, who, who are those? It's like, now tell me, who, who's, what's happening? He said, this man, the enemy of the Jews, Haman, he says he wants to get rid of us. The king said, what? She stood up, went to the garden. Then Haman knew that the king has already decided what he's going to do to him. So he was pleading. Oh, the, 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 king, uh, the queen, he was pleading. So when the, uh, the king came back from the garden, he saw that Haman is leaning on the woman's chair. Ah, you want to molest my wife here to my house? Come on, take him. He was, he went to the 
the, the Walus. He was hung instead of the Jews. So what your, your enemy wish for you? It will go back to them. It's only that you have to go to, hold on to God, Christ. Be on your guide. Eh? Your feet. Your feet. Stand on your feet. Be courageous. Hold on tight. Do everything in love. They protest for Haman to be sent. Mordecai to be sent in the Jews. Now Haman has been sent. And then the king just gave authority to them. The Jews. And one thing that I was saying, when the Haman saw that, uh, he, went, he said that the, 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 the king told him, somebody I want to honor. But the king went to the books and saw that it was uh, Mordecai who saved his life. They were going to assassinate him. So it's in the book. So the king wrote, uh, read about it. So he said to Haman, I want to, I don't know, I want to elevate, I want to, I want to elevate this man. What can I do for him? The Haman said, put your royal clothes on him and then go around and say, this is what the king wants to do. The king, the king said, you Haman, you Haman, do that. You do that. So the Haman took the man around and he was showing this what the king had to, you know, honor him and blah, blah, blah. Eh? Then he went and told the wife. The wife said, hey, for, this man is a, a Jewish man. You have touched a Jewish man, you are in trouble. Huh? Then you just touch your end. We are God's eyes. We are God's, you know, we are the eye of God. When you touch, you can touch. Unless we, we, we stand put, we serve God wholeheartedly. Give everything that we have to God. And God will never let us miss. Because we are God's own eye. When you read Psalm 105, eh, 15, we be, we be from the 14, he says, God did not allow anyone to oppress the, his, his, the, 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 the Israelites. Because of them, kings were rebuked. Touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. They are special people. You are God's own eye. You are the eye of God. We are unique people. God has made us in his own image. It's weird that we don't do we are doing things anyhow. We are special people. So my advice to all of us, especially women, anywhere we are, in our family, in our homes, at the church, at our workplaces, our neighborhood, anywhere we go. We have to people see the God that God has Christ in us. You know our greetings. Talk about Jesus. He revealed himself unto you. They were going to Amos and they were discussing about Jesus. Immediately Jesus appeared. So when we talk about Jesus, when you look for me, you find me. Isaiah 55, verse 6. See him while he can be found. Call on him while he's near. God is near. So, beloved, I'm very sorry. The time we didn't, I'm sorry, there was so much I could say, but there was no much time. But I thank God for today that God has you know, let you listen. Can we pray now?